Hey, YouTube. I would like to show off Skaka from Krevgren, which is a uh, many different type of percussive instrument. Instrument. Uh, <laughs> it's it's got all kinds of different weird stuff going on in here. Uh, this might remind you of another Krevgren app, which is Ting, which was a whole bunch of found sounds throughout his house. This is uh, a little bit more traditional um, shaken percussion elements here. So you got a tambourine, and obviously, you know, they get put little seeds in a little shaker thing and um, you put weird shit in eggs and stuff like that. This is a whole bunch of reasonable musical instruments that we're using that are all shaken. Uh, <laughs> and uh, to show this off, I've got this uh, loaded up as an AUV3 inside of Om, and I've got uh, Zox over here, uh, which is a good sequencer. It's it's mainly used for like a, a house acid sort of a, a sequencing where you got your know, bass drums and every single Rosetta thing, you need to go in and change the MIDI from being awful to accent two, where it will correctly sequence to shock, uh, sock, skaka. <laughs> I got it on the third try. Uh, once I run it in here, it is correctly writing everything. So just remember that accent two fixes the weird MIDI thing from all of the Rosetta plugins. So as you see, I've got a whole bunch of different things going on here. I got a shaker, I got a tambourine, I got seeds. Let me raise the output on this so you're clearly hearing all this. If you have access to some decent headphones, you're gonna to wanna to put them on for this because the samples in here are really nuanced. Uh, let me uh, show you an example of this. I'm gonna go into this uh, shaker and I'm gonna change it over into being a uh, Man, that looks like a Klingon word, I don't even know. Uh, and here, Inside, let me show you what I did because I was using the mouse here. If I click on any of this time area here, it brings up the editor. And the editor's got a whole lot of different stuff in here, but the main thing I want to show you right now is just how much sample information is in here. So you've got this trigger in, fade out, and right now, for some reason, they all default to fading out with uh, 50 milliseconds, which is really short. Let's say increase this. We've got a more continuous sort of shake going on here, right? And all these lines you see next to it are the um, per step modulations of everything. So we can modulate the velocity, the duration, the pitch, and the gain for everything in here. So in this case, on this Kzikzi, I am going to uh, want to add some variety here instead of just having this kind of... Um, it's got a little bit of variety to it. I want to add some extra variety. So let me show you if I hit this on. All right, you can see it from here. You see how this uh, right now it's on beat sync, and it's it's moving along. It's it's moving this little playhead timer to that's keeping time with the beat. But I find that this time sync is a little bit more predictable, and you can see how it's showing up here on the the yellow here, like that looks more consistent with what I'm seeing in Zox, so it's easier to, to work with. So I can say, well, okay, on this first one, let's, let's get a ton of velocity going on. But maybe on this one, uh, let's... Let me mute everything else so that you're only hearing this. Right, I went through and muted everything else, so now we're just listening to the Kzikzi on this first track. And I'm changing the velocities with wherever I've hit a... A note. Uh, so I'm lowering that one here and I'm going to change this one here. And maybe I'm just going to go crazy with the rest of these and just going to go wherever. All right. God damn it. It's hard to do this with the mouse. All right, there we go. Just kind of all over the place. Uh, so, you know, we got some variety in there, right? We can filter that, we can take out some of the highs. You can even repitch it. Just goes into weird territory. Add some delay. And this humanized thing. Did you hear that? Like it's it's a subtle sort of effect, but it, it's it's kind of weird. Like it, it's it's adding just a little bit of shuffle, but it's 
I think it's affecting the duration and stuff instead of the way that shuffle would typically be uh, when the actual note would hit. This is like playing with the you know the dura uh, duration and, and pitch and stuff. And we can do that. Okay, on this first one, we got a really high velocity, but we got a tiny duration. Now just adding in some curves like this is automatically just adding some variety to this. And that's something that's like really uh, fundamental to these sorts of uh, odd percussive elements. Is It's more interesting to layer them up with a lot of variety rather than, than just sequencing them out straight with the Zox. In fact, let's, let's not use Zox anymore at all. Let's get weird. So I'm going to uh, turn off Zox here and bring in another Rosetta sequencer. So now I'm bringing in rhythm instead of uh, Zox. And I'm once again routing it through here. Another way to route in OM, um, if you're unfamiliar, is to bring up this uh, panel over here, uh, which lets you specifically say, okay, I want this to go to this app. And we could say the same thing about the Zox. But right now, let's, let's focus just on uh, rhythm. And rhythm works entirely different from Zox, where we give it the number of beats we want in a bar. So let's say I want three beats in a bar. Well, now it's, it's giving me three beats in that bar, right? <laughs> if I go over here and I say, well, give me uh, four on this one, but shift it this way. We're immediately getting into some interesting uh, polyrhythmic stuff. And it really is just a matter of like listening to it and tweaking things and experimenting. Oh, I really like that the, the new one that just came in there. Let me try emphasizing that now. And again, I didn't change the MIDI on this, so it's going to be, it's going to look weird. I have to close this out. What is that? The Calabash, I think. So this is a really elaborate sort of thing that we see right here, but you notice how since it's on beat, it's just basically only ever hitting this, like the first few bits here. If we go out and we change this from beat synced to time, uh, timeline synced, there, we're getting that, that variety. So see, it came preloaded with this in, I think I'm in the init patch. Right, anyhow, we can... Um, Clear all this out. Like here, let me just hit new. It completely resets everything. Uh, so I can come in here, uh, put the calabash back on, and give it some velocities because right now we're not hearing it at all because there's no velocity. <laughs> just gonna draw in some random stuff here. Oh yeah, I gotta go back again and change it to using time. There we go. And we're gonna actually hear the things that I'm doing here. And again, I wanna play with this uh, trigger fade out. Like, man, that makes such a huge, a huge difference right there where it's like, I'm struggling with trying to explain this concept because it's weird, right? Like percussion actually means a thing, but we misuse the word in music. Uh, percussion means you're hitting something, right? And shaking things aren't really percussive. So um, <laughs> this is a an entirely different realm of things that we just kind of lump into the percussive label, but we oughtn't. Like it's just, we call everything that's weird and not normal, <laughs> uh, like a normal instrument, uh, percussive. This is kind of like uh, what they've got going on in uh, the musical Stomp, where they just layer a lot of different weird things like brushes and, and uh, brooms and all these, uh, uh, you know, obviously tin cans and things like that, that that make percussive noises. But it's just a lot of different things that you're layering on top of each other in different polyrhythms that they create it, their own unique thing that honestly deserves a, a better title than just other progressive elements. So <laughs> that's what we're doing here, though. We're, we're making other percussive elements that sound really good when you layer them up. Now, 
Now we could continue to go on like this for quite a while. Like we just um, maybe yeah, I'll just throw in a bunch of other things here, and we'll shift things around uh, as needed. Now it seems like those last two didn't actually start triggering something, so I'm going to manually change what uh, MIDI they're assigned to. Okay, I want to get this Gungroos going. Uh, so that was the closed hat. Oh, now that started triggering the Kaxixi. I should have hit Axon 2 at the beginning of this, but I didn't, so now we're kind of stuck with whatever weirdness we're, we're dealing with. Oh, shit. Ah. Oh. All right, here we go. <laughs> like, I kind of dig that kick 60 thing, but it's not really working in this. Oh, yeah, here, here we go. Finally found the Gungaroos, and I'm going to make this one whatever is after the Gungaroos, the egg here. And it looks like they both got some weird stuff going on with their velocity and stuff. Let's check that out. It's not nearly as weird as it looked on this. Again, I like to just kind of draw some random stuff to start off with. And if I really, really need to change something, I will. Um, yeah, this seems fine right now. Maybe filter off some of the higher bits there. And you see, I'm, I'm trying to be careful with how much of the out I'm adding in, because if we just go like this on everything, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> I'm trying to just a little bit of that stuff rolling in here. And let me see what's going on with the egg. So the egg would only trigger on these last notes. That's not useful. Uh, let me see. Change the edit. Okay, the edit mode's already on eight. And again, you know let's let's try something else. The egg's not working there. Oh, I didn't realize it had a, a high end. Maybe that's why I've been sending word. Oh, I, I see why it had a high end, because the, the in on that egg sucks. Uh, all right, let's try. So this is basically what I was doing with the kick Z up here, but we were sequencing that with Zox, and now we're, we're doing something a little bit different down here. Um, let's, let's call that for right now and let's, let's try to make this even weirder now. Uh, I'm going to turn off its own, uh, reverb stuff and we're going to start adding some additional reverb to this. You'll see that I've got, I've already pre-routed some things here where C is, is basically my master bus here where I've got a limiter at the end of it to make sure that I don't blow out anybody's ears, especially mine. And... I'm going to now change this to route the audio from Skaka into these two Bs. And one of these uh, I'm going to just kill for right now. The other I'm going to throw in a uh, velvet. Oh, shit. Velvet machine. Um, which is a wild, not a reverb. Like, wow, that's, that's a whole lot of that, right? Uh, let me calm that down before we go. Go. All right, so 
every time that this, which you can think of as like an ADSR, wherever it's high, you're getting more of the reverb from this not a reverb app. And we can change like just huge amounts of where in our sound we're, we're getting this not reverb from using this uh, elaborate uh, ADSR sort of thing where we can add our own points in or double click to remove them. And you can do some really, really weird stuff. Like let's say I put in one here. Like that's adding an interesting sort of breathing element to it. Let me take out some of the really high stuff. This density thing has a really big impact on things. Like it starts to become a staccato as we lower this. And the same will happen when you lower the time. Like if you make the time huge, it just blurs, which is something that you want. But in this case, I'm looking for something that's this staccato to go with our not percussive percussive elements and are not a reverb reverb app. So that's it's not too weird. Like I don't want this to be too super weird, but I do want it to be kind of unique. Like it's. It's rolling with all the things that we've got going on right now. Uh, let's bring in the dry signal. And let's see here. I'll try uh, tweaking this a bit here. Put in this mid side uh, thing here where I can change which parts. Let me get this. So we're only hearing now the uh, affected signal through velvet. And I'm changing what portion of the stereo field is going into it. All right. And I'm taking the center and it's getting widened inside of uh, velvet. But here I'm actually only giving it the sides. And those are getting the treatment from velvet. I'll meet this and try to find some balance here. Like, so we got the the rolling layers of not percussive stuff going on in Skaka. Now we've got some rolling not reverb going on from Velvet Reverb or Velvet uh, <laughs> Velvet Machine. Uh, so it's it, it's fun, right? Like it's it's a lot of. I'm gonna kind of boost this down. Um, throw on a quick uh, distortion effect here. Just want to add some saturation. Oh, whoops. There we go. This this little trick I showed with the uh, the mid side processing here, I think is really really important, and I hope that you're listening to this in stereo uh, headphones in order to appreciate that. Because it's I'm not just being clever. I'm trying to show you something that's really important here, where it, it's really good for taking these these weird sort of sounds that we've got going on in our stereo field, and really being very specific about I want you to be weird with only this portion of it. Like we could go in and, and continue to build on this where we add more and more layers of either Skaka or even more reverb. Like maybe we start to put a, uh, a tamer sort of reverb thing on the dry signal here. And you know, there's, there's lots of ways to take this and, and build up something that's suitable to your taste. Uh, I'm really enjoying what we've got right now. So I'm just going to leave this and let it play us out. <laughs> Thank you very much to all my Patreon patrons for making these videos possible. Thank you, folks.